Can you hear me, everybody? Oh, there you can. I hear myself. My goodness. Very loud, very loud. How are we today? Everybody good? Who, who was here yesterday? Hands up. Who's looking for a really great presentation on influence marketing? Okay. Great. Okay. Well, um, my name is Gordon Dennister. Um, a little bit about uh, me, um, uh, actually, about what we're going to talk about. Uh, what is influencer marketing? The different types of influencer campaigns, setting your objectives, um, what not to do with an influencer, finding the right influencers, and vetting the influencer. Now, I'm going to tell you, there is a huge amount of content here. I hope I can get through this in the time. So if at any time I feel like I'm speeding up, it's because I've only got 25 minutes. What I will say, though, is anybody wants a copy of the slides, my email is at the back and I'll send them to you tomorrow, so you can have that. Um, just a little bit about me for those of you that don't know me. Um, I am the author of Influencer Marketing Strategy, which I'm really delighted about, because last year we were, a, uh, we were the finalist for the Business Book of the Year Awards. This is where you say, hooray. <laughs> um, but for somebody that hasn't written a book before, I was really, really chuffed about it, and it just proves the importance of the subject matter. Um, I'm also the uh, host of Influence the Global Podcast. If anybody, anybody of you likes a good podcast to listen to, then do take a listen. We've got loads and loads of really amazing guests on there. Um, I also run my own influencer program where I work with individuals to help them become experts in their field. And that's a really, really important thing. Um, many of you have heard the word personal brand, I'm sure. The reality is all of you have a brand right now. It's what you do with it and how you leverage it. So whilst we're talking a lot about influencer marketing, a good way to start is with yourselves. So just bear that in mind. If you want any ideas and help and support about that, I'm more than happy to do that for you. So what is an influencer? My definition is as an individual who can affect change in the behavior of others, often through trusted opinion, knowledge, and content creation. Um, you'd be amazed, a lot of people that are influential don't call themselves influencers. Yeah, they may be an author, they may be um, a, a speaker, they may be a technical expert, they may host a big Facebook group, but these people are all influencers in some shape or form. Um, so one of the things that's really important, and we'll talk about that a little later, is finding these people and you're not necessarily going to find it just by the title. So what is influencer marketing? It's very simple, really. It's nothing new. In fact, we trust the opinions of others uh, more than anything else, don't we? If you look at even Marlboro Man, Santa Claus, you know, all these individuals, Ronald McDonald, you know, the, uh, people have used people advertising for many, many years. So. Um, it's just the ability to work with an individual to promote a product or service throughout a campaign. So let's have a look at some of these people. Does anyone know who this lady is? Tezza, yeah? She's got 1.3 million followers on Instagram. The reason why I put her up there is because when I founded the Branded Content Marketing Association, we asked 250 influencers who they most admire, and she came out top of the list. Why? Because her content is very high value, and she is consistent with what she does and how regularly she does it. So consistency of posting is a very important part of being a successful influencer. Anybody know who this lady is? What's her name? Superclar Blondie, absolutely. She has I think something like 16 million subscribers onto her, her YouTube channel, and she specializes entirely on, on uh, supercars and bringing them to life. She excites her audience. We want to feel like we're owning it. But that's an example of somebody owning a niche. So when you work with an influencer, the tighter the niche, the better. Because when you're looking to vet an influencer, you want to make sure that your values of your product and service are aligned with those. What you don't want is somebody that is literally having content from all different areas. And remember, you don't want to confuse the algorithm. 
And the algorithm wants to serve the influencer's content up to the right audience. And the moment we're talking about different things, it's very, very confusing. What about this guy here? Ga Gary V, yeah? Why is he a successful influencer? Why? Because he's authentic. He doesn't pull his punches. Not everybody likes him, but he's, he's, he's absolutely really to the point and what he says and how he says it. And that's what you want. You want authority and um, originality. So why do we follow uh, influencers? Well, some of us, it's because we want to pass the time of day. Do you know on our mobile phones, on average, we scroll the entirety of the Eiffel Tower on average, yeah? So you have less than three or four seconds for your product and service to be grabbed in terms of attention. You know what I'm saying? So that's, uh, and one of the reasons why influencers can be a good way for your, uh, as part of your marketing strategy is because they know what works. They know that actually by creating the right type of content to hold you there will be more effective. And many of you have been on TikTok, haven't you? And you've, you've stayed watching because there's something that's sticking you there, yeah? And maybe it's somebody, the video with the feet and it's suddenly starting to move up and you're wondering what's gonna be next. This is all part of design to keep you online. These guys know how to do it and that's really important. You wanna be inspired. You wanna learn about new brands. You wanna be entertained and feel motivated and maybe learn uh, something new or a new art or something. The other uh, element, of course, is also around education. I always say great content is about education, inspiration, and entertainment. And if you can create all those three together, you're on a willing formula. Um, so here's what you can do with an influencer. Now, obviously, there are some of you that are interested in B2B influencers, of which I'm probably one of them or um, B2C influencers. So there's a plethora of things that you can do. Now, sometimes people forget it's not just about selling your product and service. You can gain a huge amount of insight by working with influencers to ask their audience. In fact, there was, a, there was an agency in the UK that decided to do a retreat uh, in Brazil to launch a brand new product called Puricane, which was a, a sweetener. And they wanted to create something really original and different. So they invited four or five of these influencers for a three or four day retreat. And the influencers and the brand created this whole product together. But here's the fascinating thing. The influencers asked their audience while they were on the retreat what type of product they might be looking for, what colors they like, you know, what their interests were. So can you imagine all of this insight coming in when the product was a was finally came to market, it was such a success, such a success that the company was so impressed with the agency, they bought the agency. Now, if that isn't a, an, a, an effective ROI, I don't know what is. Um, you can create video, uh, and I've, I've, see, I've used the word series here. It's really important because so often, um, we think we have mixed expectations about working with influencers. We think, oh, well, let's put a post out and everything's going to fall in. All the sales are going to come. No, that's not going to happen. It's about building brand awareness, which is why ambassador programs are a really, really good way to engage your audience. Um, promoting new products and live streaming. Social commerce now is huge. In fact, there's a lady in, an, in China called Becky Lai. She famously sold 100 mini cars in five minutes. Five minutes, it got all over the news. They went crazy for it um, because she already had an engaged audience. Uh, you can use influencers to work for you as social media takeovers, as we call it. Um, Podcast partnerships. I've done some with the fashion industry where I interviewed five top fashion influencers on behalf of a, an influencer platform. Hugely successful because then we dropped one podcast episode each day during London Fashion Week. So we got content, we got relevance, and we got huge engagement. 
And that was like two and a half thousand pounds for five episodes. So it wasn't a huge amount of investment. Obviously stuff like posts and stories on Instagram as well, uh, and guest blogging. I mentioned ambassador programs. I'm conscious you guys may not be able to see everything. Can you see everything over here? Yeah. Um, here's an example of if you were to run your own ambassador program, what sort of things you can offer. Now these are very, very uh, effective and many, many brands now do this. They'll offer a commission, they'll offer exclusive offers, all manner of different things. Two things that matter to an influencer, A, getting paid, and secondly, nurturing and growing their audience. So can you offer them something exclusive, like exclusive access to event, or before a product comes online, like a new product, um, uh, something you might be doing that's unusual. Um, Oxfam did something interesting enough with some influencers where they brought them along to their, uh, their operation in the UK. So they were able to tell the story of what happens to recycled clothing all the way through. So it was an exclusive piece of content they were able to share and they didn't pay them for it. So sometimes you can do influencer campaigns without payment, but think about what's important to them. Um, lots of things that you can do with TikTok um, through in-feed videos, hashtag challenges, personalized brand lenses. You, um, one thing I will say is if you've found some really good creators, ask them, tell them about your objectives, what you're trying to do. I think good influencers are the next creative agencies. Don't just see them as amplifiers. Does that make sense? Bring them into the If you were employing a brand agency, you'd have a, you'd, you'd have like a, a get together meeting, wouldn't you? You'd be talking about what's gonna work. Do the same thing with influencers. Um, here's a few um, example influencers here. This is a, a classic example of a, uh, of a specialist called Champagne Gem. Um, what I like about her is, again, very, very on the money with her personal brand. Everything on her story is all about different gemstones. Uh, she, of course, refers to herself not as an influencer, but as a digital creator. Um, uh, I want to just talk to you also about uh, Tiana Wilson. She was um, 14, um, and what YouTube sensation. now. I don't know if any of you have got children, but they may well know um, Toys and Me is the YouTube account. So what she did is she just reviewed, reviews toys for a, for a living. This was the store in Bradford. They did a pop-up store. So not only are these influencers promoting products, but now they've got their own product lines. And this is becoming more and more popular. So over 20,000 people came to vid is visit this store over two days. You know, look. Look how tiny she is. <laughs> it just proves if you find the right people, um, anything is possible. So what objectives would you set if you were going to run an influencer campaign? Um, well, um, make sure that they're smart, specific, uh, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. I'm sure you know what they mean. Make sure that if you are looking for brand awareness, you might be looking for a bigger scale influencer with greater followers and reach. If you are looking to maybe build a subscriber base or if you've got apps as downloads, are you looking to increase sales? If you're looking to increase sales, might I suggest you use a micro influencer who has a much smaller audience but is closer engaged with their audience so they can actually achieve better results for you than somebody that's got a bigger audience. If you've got a limited budget, spread it with nano and micro influencers. Don't put it all into the, to the big pot. You might want to create a loyalty program and repeat purchase. Um, you might want to do affiliate marketing. That's also a very effective uh, mechanism. But remember to give the influencers something that they can give to their audience. So if you are going to give a 20% affiliate, maybe you want to split that and give 10 to the influencer and give 10 to the influencer's followers. Does that make sense? Yeah? Um, also, what social engagement are you? Are you just looking to really grow your awareness on Instagram and TikTok? But be very, very clear about that with your, with your influencer. Sorry, I've, these are in dollars, but 
um, the reason I was just going to mention this is sometimes people have got no idea how much it costs to hire an influencer. It can be actually very inexpensive. But remember you, what you're asking them to do. Are you asking them to do just one post or story? Or are you, are you um, uh, their, cont their content that they're creating does not mean that you can use that on your own social campaigns and website. It could do, but you must agree to those things. So let's have a look at engaging with influencers. This is a really, really important thing. Some t what, they, what they don't like, right, at all, is you just sending a blanket email to all. And the worst, if you say the word dear influencer, you will get a zero response. They are human beings with feelings. <laughs> so make sure that you do that. So I'm just gonna show all of, all of these things here without going through all of them. But hopefully you can see a process of light touch to what we do to recognize them, to activating influencers, and then developing them as advocates. Because ultimately what we want here is we want fans for our product. That's what we want. And the only way that's going to happen is if we nurture them and pull them, pull them through. So some really, really cool ideas um, for you to have a look at there. Now, what not to do with an influencer? Um, expect an influencer to work like an employee. They are not your employees. Um, not having a proper brief or contract in place. You wouldn't hire somebody in your business and expect them to, to sell your product. So a proper brief is really important. If you want a template for that, let me know afterwards and I'll happily send that to you. Not setting goals in which to measure. Influencer marketing is 11 times greater ROI than any other form of media. Remember that. But when done well, yeah? Using the right content, the right influences at the right time. When you don't set proper goals, guess what happens, you know? we all get disappointed. Not allowing enough time. Don't expect an influencer to do something tomorrow. They're busy people, so make sure that you allow enough time. Having inconsistencies in brand guidelines. If you've got a set of brand guidelines, make sure that you send them, help them. That could also be your competitors, so they know what not to do as well. Not using the proper legal requirements like hashtag ad. That is a, that's an essential part of the uh, ingredient. And also not paying the influencer on time. If you want to upset an influencer and you've agreed a certain amount of money, don't pay them after 60 days. Why shouldn't you do that? Because they've got a big voice. <laughs> okay, so finding the right influencers. Here are just some of the ways that which you can do that, either through a PR or social media agency. Um, direct outreach, although that is quite timely, uh, time uh, conscious. Influence agencies, I've got lists of all these people that you might want to consider as well. Uh, social insights platforms, Google search, all sorts of different ways. And I'm sure there are others as well. Um, now look what we can find out about an influencer. Some of the influencer platforms are phenomenal. And for those of you that are techie um, like data, we can find out um, with their audience where their audience come from. So if you were launching a new vegan restaurant in London and you thought, this looks good, I like the aesthetics of this post, well, we might find that 70% of that audience are based in America. So we're, our available market is only 30% of the audience. Remember, with an influencer, it's their audience that matters more than anything else. We can also f find out how much of their audience is real as opposed to fake. I can find out that she's got 61% female followers. I can actually find out on some of them the average household income of some of these and the audience level as well. It's pretty cool. Um, a little bit now on metrics. There are all sorts of things that you can do to measure um, the effectiveness. Of, I've, I've just put some of them uh, on there just to give you an idea um, which I hopefully is uh, uh, helpful for you. There we go. I think we're just about almost 
uh, um, oh, we've got, still got five minutes. Amazing, great, that's good. I've got some time for some questions. Um, that's my um, email, gordon at gordonglenster.com. That's my phone number. If any of you want to have a Zoom meeting with me, have a chat, buy my book, then feel f free to do so. As I've already got a few minutes, has anybody got a question that you'd like to ask? Have I completed everything that you don't need a question? <laughs> okay. The Eiffel Tower, I thought that was actually quite a good um, mind hook of the amount of time that we actually spend scrolling. Oh, yeah. I quite, quite so I said, I said the average time that you look through your phone is the length of the Eiffel Tower. So if you think about how much time that is, you have seconds to grab the attention. So the hook is everything. Now, one, th one tip of advice I'm just going to share you on that is when you do stuff online, you share something, you like it, you comment on it. Why do you do that? What is it? Are you being entertained? Are you being educated? Are you being fascinated? So whatever you are doing, apply that to your own social channels and network. Then you will become really, really good at this sort of stuff. Um, but anyway, hopefully you found that interesting, guys. Um, I want to wish you a, a very happy afternoon. If you want to have a chat with me, I have, I'm on a stand over there called B20. Um, or I can just hang around outside here if you want. Um, feel free, because I'm just conscious of the next audience coming in. Thank you so much.